Daniel Cho as our 207's best in fine arts. <laughs> if you uh, stand in the imaginary spotlight next to Dr. Collins. <laughs> so, um, Daniel Cho, can I tell you about him? He continues to be one of the very strongest students academically at Maine East High School. And uh, he's taken just about every kind of AP thing you could have wanted. And, some electives along the way, also uh, <clears throat> AP Spanish language that he started in uh, middle school and is continuing as AP this year. But specifically in fine arts, um, he's been enrolled in drama. He's a four-year student there, been in chamber choir for the last two years, and he's a three-year member of our a cappella group, Audacity in Blue. Um, I can also tell you that um, he's a member of National Honor Society. He is a National Merit Commended Scholar this year. Um, he served on the interview team last spring as we were selecting uh, was George Vick, who ultimately got the job as a fine arts department chair. So was a great student representative there. Uh, he was one of the student hosts of the D207 Ed Foundation's first ever virtual fundraising event last spring. So uh, you may remember that, as I think most of us were there. And he is uh, co-president of the Thespian Troop at Maine East High School. Um, last year, through competitive audition, Daniel was selected as a member of the Illinois Music Education Association um, District and All-State Honor Choirs, and more recently he was selected again through competitive audition as a cast member for the 2022 Illinois High School Theater Festival production of uh, Cabaret, which has been um, rehearsing through the fall and uh, will be presented in January down at Illinois State University. And just a few years, a few weeks ago, he earned honors uh, being named again to the Illinois Music Educator Association District 7 Honors Choir. And uh, we'll see what happens on the all-state end of things, not wanting to jinx anything, but I'm sure it's going to go well. Um, and just a few days ago, if you were at our homecoming assembly, um, Daniel was the solo vocalist singing a cappella national anthem for over 2,000 uh, spectators at our homecoming assembly. So um, he is very, very visible as a performer at Main East High School. Um, if you take a look, um, I don't read through all of these, but he has appeared on, in every stage production um, that has been mounted at Main East since the beginning of his ninth grade year, um, always as a cast member and frequently in a dual role as sort of a leader behind the scenes in what he's done. Um, I'm going to come back to the fine arts in just a minute, but I wanted to uh, just share a couple of comments. So um, Carly Vance, who is director of the Schuler Scholar Program at Maine East and is here tonight, um, just noted that Daniel is hardworking and thoughtful, enjoys making others smile and asking big questions. He's self-aware and works to find balance between his challenging academics and his extracurriculars. He's an independent thinker with unique drive among his peers who seeks a greater understanding in his academic pursuits and appreciates learning for learning's sake. He is fiercely loyal to his commitments and settles for nothing less than his personal best and all that he commits himself to. Um, Jen Conlon, who is a social science teacher and uh, has him in AP US government politics, um, commented that he combines a passion for learning and a questioning disposition with the commitment to the lived experience of, of others that the arts represent. In this way, he embodies the best of the humanities. Um, Two, other, two others that I want to read. Karen Hall is our drama director at Maine East and has been uh, Daniel's teacher in drama for four years. So Daniel's taken four years of drama and he pushes himself every day in drama class as he tries and succeeds to master one more skill or one more technique. He's a hard worker who often forgoes personal accolades for group success. He is the epitome of the ensemble member. He excels both at comedy and at drama and has demonstrated that he has a real flair for improvisation. 
Daniel's work on stage has been exemplary, especially his performance in Legally Blonde as Professor Callahan, Clue as Captain Mustard, Working as Mike, and uh, his Fall in Puffs as Wayne. Uh, Daniel is also a strong academic student, keeps a rigorous schedule full of honors and AP classes. He's a Schuler scholar. Um, she also added on a personal level, Daniel is a warm, friendly young man who wants very much to continue his study of acting. His willingness to grow is his greatest strength. Um, Kate Lee, who is our director of choirs, who is also here tonight, said, I will never forget Daniel's rendition of some father's sons in our pandemic musical working in which he sang about his character's relationship with his father. This was performed immediately after another castmate gave a monologue based on Daniel's own relationship with his father who lives abroad. This is one of the most poignant and beautiful student works I've ever witnessed. Daniel's given so much to the fine arts program over the last four years. But what is most extraordinary about Daniel is not how much he has given, but through which circumstances he has given. During his junior year, Daniel sang in Bisho and Acapella, performed the lead role in our spring musical, and was selected for both the ILMEA District 7 Choir and All-State Honors Choir. These are enormous accomplish accomplishments in themselves, but to have accomplished them during a pandemic is really quite remarkable. I'm constantly inspired by Daniel and feel forever grateful for his leadership, his camaraderie, and his resilience in the fine arts program during these difficult times. Um, and you know, I think as the year progresses, um, you know, this week, this is actually production week for B-Show, so I'm confident we're going to see a lot of Daniel here on uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And I'd say uh, chances are pretty good we're going to see him in Mamma Mia and whatever the spring play ends up being. I'm not sure what the show is. But, um, you know, again, he has a pretty extraordinary lived experience in just a few short years of life. So I think, uh, you know, he's kind of an old soul in that regard. And uh, you know, clearly he has done a great deal to make our school community a better place. So congratulations. So we'll here with you tonight. I'm here to support you. Oh, um, my mother's with me tonight. Um. Very good. And uh, what are your plans next year? Next year, um, I want to continue in acting. And I'm planning on majoring in theater. Very good. And are you applying or planning to apply? And yeah, uh, I'm in the process right now. I think recently I finished my early decision application. All right. Very good. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Seventh Best in Fine Arts, and if you've seen anything fine arts at Maine South, Adeline has been behind it. She is a backstage crew member, including construction crew head, assistant technical director, and assistant stage manager for the musical and fall play. She's also a clarinetist, a two-time section leader, and part of the equipment crew for marching band. She's also a section leader in choir, so she does all three uh, in the alto section. She's taken a wide array of courses doing double music and art classes. So if there's anything fine arts, she's there too. She's done decibels, one of our acapella groups. Uh, she's also a member, just like Daniel actually, of Cabaret, the all-state production. She'll be building the sets, you'll be acting, maybe you can tell <laughs> There's some time tonight in the board, maybe you can give us a little uh, piece. <laughs> um, she also started up a club that had been on hiatus for a while, the Maine South Technical Theater Guild. And um, she's really proud of that, and we're going to hear just in a moment from Mr. Sanchez about some of the work that that group does. Member of Tri-M, which is actually a Music Honor Society, which is national, which was started here in Maine, um, and a thespian. She, and she's in, in other areas of the building, like Environmental Club, where she's vice president, and she's on the green team, which she's, I know, excited about, studying school-wide approaches to reducing waste and increasing recycling. And she's been recognized as Student of Quarter in English, Science Department Award winner, member of Hawk Pride, Empower, German Club, and NHS. And outside of school, she dances in the studio, which she's been doing since she was three, right? All right. So just a lot of active stuff. So uh, let's a few comments here. Um, Adeline's counselor, Mr. Spiegel, who is with us this evening, says, I know Adeline is an industrious, charismatic, talented young lady. Her involvement and leadership at Maine South have been remarkable. As one of a few students who have been dedicated themselves in numerous organizations and activities throughout the school, 
Adeline has been dedicating herself towards making Maine South better for students and staff alike. However, I believe that Adeline is not merely, merely accomplished because of her impressive work ethic. I believe she's distinctive because of her innate ability to share the personality traits of instinctive politeness, invariable diligence, and the extension of warm feelings to those around her. Among the many students that I have had the pleasure to work with in my 30 years as an educator, Adeline ranks among the very best. The combination of natural intellect, exemplary character, and uncompromising drive gives Adeline the capacity to be, to be an influential leader for years to come. Mr. Pat Sanchez, the Fine Arts Department Technical Director, says, Adeline has worked with me since her freshman year on stage crew and has been a member of my class. During her time on crew, she has risen in the ranks from construction crew to construction crew head and is my assistant technical director this year. Adeline is not only a member of stage crew, but has been president of the Maine South Theatrical Technicians Guild since her sophomore year. This is a group of dedicated crew members who assist in aspects outside of our fine arts department, providing both theatrical assistance and support. They've also created stage crew coloring books that were distributed to children at Lutheran General as a present during Christmas. Adeline is very dedicated to stage crew. She is a member of the All-State Thespian Theater Festival crew. She was selected from students across the state to assist in building, painting, and lighting the scenery for the All-State production of Cabaret. Adeline is amazing, kind, and hard worker. Her talents and abilities will take her far in the theater and in the world. And David Hutter, uh, the band director at Main South, is also here tonight. It says, Adeline has been in band for four years, and she is a second year clarinet section leader. She continually creates a warm and welcoming environment in her section and is a great role model for younger students. Adeline possesses a great work ethic, which allows her to balance all of her activities and she's extremely dependable. She brings a mature mindset to, her, to hectic situations and uses her problem solving skills to make solutions happen. Congratulations, Adeline. And when Adeline and I were talking about this award and I was just kind of asking her some of the things that she was involved in. Uh, she made a couple of comments about the whole fine arts department. I know this is true at Maine South and Maine East and Maine West. Um, she said that all of the teachers are a second family and it's nice to for them to have a second home and that there's a family in fine arts and the connections you make give you great leadership skills. You become more confident and the foundation you get gives you more, gives you more of an opportunity to succeed outside of school and after high school. So with everything going on, Adeline, I know we're really excited for the Allstate stuff that you've got coming down the pipe, but um, the productions here cannot happen with having awesome, awesome technicians behind the scenes because ultimately, at the end of the day, you build the foundation for everything. Mm -hmm. And you've done that at our high school, and thank you very much. Congratulations. Yeah, you, yeah why don't you tell us who's here with oh, you tonight? my mom and dad are here. <laughs> plans for next year? Um, hoping to major in environmental studies. So. And what do you want to do with environmental studies? Like working with big corporations to reduce plastic waste. Awesome. Congratulations. <laughs> about my conversation with David was how many times she used the word opportunity. Um, what the rest of us see as everyday experiences and images, David sees as opportuni opportunities to create, opportunities to capture something beautiful and meaningful, opportunities to practice a skill set that can enrich the world. Giving credit to her mom, David um, revealed that she's always had great opportunities to nurture her vision and creativity whether making dresses for her dolls, practicing handwriting and doodles, taking numerous art classes as a child in which she said she has never had a bad art teacher. Daylin described her mother's support and encouragement as important influences on the refinement of her keen artistic vision. Now, her mom and stepdad volunteer to drop help with photo assignments and drive to locations. Pablo's a little bit more reluctant, but he doesn't. Um, <laughs> because they want her to be passionate about what she does in life. They want to give her every opportunity. Daylin loves and excels in all media, including the fabrics and the fashion classes in which she excels. But her special passion is photography, specifically the darkroom and the process of developing her images into tangible, preservable prints. I love the process, she told me, emphasizing how delicate it is. 
The precision required in managing chemicals and light came with a patience that surprised her. The images are fragile, she said, and she must handle them with care or they may be lost. Film and paper are superior, she explained. It's so easy to lose digital images, but you have to be skilled to create a real tangible print that captures exactly what you want. She makes lists of images, objects, or people with distinctive features or qualities that make them unique. She seeks opportunities to tell their story. In addition to leading the way in numerous art and fashion courses, Daylene is the photo editor of The Westerner, a leader in fashion and cosmetology club, and a member of Maine West Color Guard, Link Crew, National English Honor Society. She hopes to go into photography and potentially art education as a career. Even though she has seriously considered fashion photography, she loves teaching more. Relationships and growth are important to her, and she wants to help other people find opportunities to explore their creativity and have the excellent hands-on experiences that she has had. Memories and relationships are everything, she said, a sentiment that also seasons her feelings about her high school experience, of which she said, it will be so hard to let that go, especially after missing so much. Billings' teachers expressed admiration, pride, and gratitude for their opportunity to have had her in class. In government, Ms. Parsiak says Daylene has tremendous listening skills. When she does choose to vocally participate in class, she can connect what we are learning about to what is happening in the world today. She frames things in a way that makes sense to others. Her classmates respect her. Mr. Musia appreciates her calming presence in a chaotic class. Mrs. McCluskey loves seeing her in first period PE because her smile and positive energy brightens the rest of my day. I appreciate all that she contributes in class, and I appreciate her great work ethic. On the Westerner, the sponsor of the Westerner, Ms. McGowan, noted that Daylene is humble and might not take a bow, but she is very deserving. Whether she is getting splashed on the side of the pool to capture her shot, or balancing on a chair to get photos of the fall play, Daylene goes where the action is to be the best photographer she can be. As the photo editor of the Westerner, she is an exemplary mentor to the younger photographers, coaching them through the science and art of her craft. A person of excellent character, Daylin is unflappable under deadline pressure <coughs> and respected for her good nature and kindness. Ms. Chen, who has worked with Daylin in fashion courses for four years, likewise praised her character and creativity. She is such a creative student and has an impeccable eye for design. She is meticulous when she constructs her garment projects, paying attention to the smallest of details. During her junior year, she continued to sew and design even though the, through the challenges of virtual learning, doing much of the work independently. I was so impressed by her work ethic and dedication to her craft. During this year, she completed at the Family, Career, and Community Leaders of America apparel co construction competition, earning a gold medal in casual wear. And finally, Ms. Lloyd, who has taught Daylin for four years in photo and AP2D design, says she is by far one of the most talented students that I have had the honor of teaching. She is self-motivated, creative, and extremely talented artist. She is a responsible and flexible student when it comes to conceptualizing new ideas for her projects. Her determination to create a superior finished piece always prevails. For the past three years, she has been selected to have a photo in the Illinois High School Art Educator Show, where we are allowed to submit only five works of art total. She is representing Maine West in the IHSAE Throwdown for Photography and was the photographer for the West Side Dance Company in the spring. On behalf of Maine West High School, I proudly present Daily Accomplice to a seventh best for fine art. Who's here with you tonight? Uh, my mom, my dad, and my brother. And can you talk about your plans for next year? Uh, I want to go to college and uh, major. That's good. Congratulations. You are all beyond. You are all beyond inspiring. I think you should collaborate and make a movie and a Broadway production. <laughs> come to, and I have no doubt that we will hear about you all in the wonderful things you're doing in fine arts in years to come. So congratulations again to those on Now is the opportunity for the award winners and families and Support them to step outside of the principal and take pictures. You're more than welcome to come back and join us for the rest of the meeting, but you're more than welcome to go home as well. Congratulations. <laughs>
So any public comments? I'm waiting for Brett, but I don't think there are any. Okay. No public comments? All right. We're going to move the sugar update, but we need... Oh, okay. Carly's here. Oh, Carly. Wonderful. Hi, everybody. Nice to see you all. I'm going to pass around Hi, some printouts for you all. Oh, yeah. I'll just send them around if that's okay. Um, wonderful to see everybody. We always enjoy being here to share a little bit about what the Schuller program has been up to the past year. We'll be sharing out on the last academic year. I know that feels like a long time ago at this point, um, but it's only a few months ago, right? Um, so just a review. I know most of you are very familiar with this, but some new faces. Um, what is the mission of the Schuller program? Right, the Schuller Scholar Program, we equip high-achieving and underrepresented students to get access to and succeed at highly selective colleges and beyond. And the students we work with are typically first-generation college dropped in their family, or students of color, and or come from low-income family backgrounds. And one quick note about virtual learning. So last year, due to the pandemic, all of our programs were virtual. Um, they did continue uninterrupted. We had to come up with some creative solutions, but we were able to continue all of our core programming uninterrupted just virtually. But we have been back in person since the beginning of this school year, which is such a joy. So tonight, I will be sharing with you some information about the last academic year, our program scale, so how many students are we able to serve, our scholar retention, how many students are we keeping in the program, and then our college attainment. Are the students getting into the school that they need to get into? So I'll start out by sharing a bit about our program scale. Um, you can see from the chart on the left that we have really consistently strong recruitment into the Schuler Scholar Program. Typically uh, recruiting somewhere in the 20s, mid-20s um, amount of students per year. Last year we had a really strong year in student recruitment. Um, we had a pretty average number of freshmen coming in, or current, I guess it was eighth graders last year becoming freshmen, but we actually had a larger than usual group of current, current ninth graders who are now sophomores coming into the program, which is why that recruitment is even stronger last year, the extra number of sophomores joining the program. So very excited that we were able to have such a large, wonderful group of students come into the program. Um, the strong recruitment that we've had paired with pretty strong retention trends over the years, has resulted in pretty significant program growth. You can see that on the chart to the right, that we, um, just over the course of the year, have gone from serving 77 to 91 students, um, which is pretty significant and which we are thrilled by. Looking to scholar retention, um, we did officially withdraw nine students from the program last year. I want to share with you what some of those drivers to that, to that withdrawal, um, what they were. A number of those withdrawals were related to students not meeting the academic expectations of the Schuler Scholar Program. So as I mentioned at the beginning, um, the Schuler Program aims to get students into highly selective colleges, which means they do need to maintain a pretty high GPA. So to, to remain in the program, students need to be earning 3.3 on weighted GPA, A's and B's, and taking a pretty rigorous course load. If at any point a student uh, falls far below those expectations or consistently below those expectations, they are likely not viable at those highly selected colleges anymore. Schuler is no longer the best fit. So we did have a few students who did not meet those expectations and did end up withdrawing last year. We also had a few students last year who decided that um, their, their future plans, their college or post-secondary plans, were no longer in alignment with the Schuler mission of a highly selective college. As students go throughout high school, learn more about themselves. It happens that a few of them ultimately decide, you know what, a highly selective college is just not my path, which is just fine. Um, overall, though, our retention trend is really positive. For example, for our senior class, their retention rate is at 86%, which means we kept 86% of the students we took in as freshmen, which is really exciting for us. And I've listed a number of the efforts that we feel like have really contributed to helping us retain a lot of our students, including culturally sustaining pedagogy, really amping up proactive academic supports, ensuring that we have consistent family communication, and also enhancing the academic support that we provide our upperclassmen as they take on many, many AP courses. 
I've highlighted here just a few of the academic challenge areas that some of our students experienced in the last academic year. For underclassmen, we really saw them struggling primarily in the AP Social Sciences, and then our sophomores and juniors really struggling more with science. To support our students in um, overcoming those academic challenges, you can see some examples of the types of academic support that we provide. And what we're really trying to do in the short program is help students become independent learners who can thrive in rigorous courses and ultimately at rigorous colleges. So we support students um, through support and executive skills, study groups, SEL, tutoring, um, helping students get comfortable in seeking help, just to name a few areas. So turning to college attainment, um, really exciting information to share. These are some of the colleges that our Schuler Scholar seniors from the East attended, um, got, got uh, were accepted to, and then ultimately decided to attend last year and are now freshmen in these schools. So really exciting list of schools. Equally exciting, I think, is this information here, uh, which relates to financial aid and success in college. So the average amount of non-loan aid that each scholar earned from the college that they matriculated to is over $56,000 per year, which is renewable over four years. So that's serious money, um, scholarships, not loans, um, really exciting amount of financial aid for students. And when they get to college, they do really, really well. Um, last year, our college freshmen were earning an average of a 3.71, which is pretty much A average in college, which is wonderful. And they're graduating on time. 95% of Mimi Schuler alumni graduate from these highly selected colleges in four years. Um, on a slightly different note, some of you may be aware of this, but some may not. Last year, we did have a pretty significant scholarship expansion within Schuler. Um, that included increasing our dollar uh, amount for scholarship for every scholar in our program to $2,500 per year. We also significantly increased our scholarship amount for undocumented students to $15,000 per year, so a total of $60,000. Um, we also introduced some new grants, one to support students in preparing for graduate school, and one to help, to help cover the uh, cost of a college-sponsored health insurance plan. So really excited about these major new investments in students' well-being and their success. And we always just like to highlight quickly a few of our alumni. Where are they now? Um, one I'd like to highlight is Jill Schaaf. She graduated in 2021 from Emory after studying biology and neuroscience. She now is back at Mimis as a science TA, which is wonderful, and is actually volunteering and tutoring Schuler Scholars, which is really nice to have her back. Um, she also was just accepted to medical school, so we're really, really thrilled for her there. And then we have Olivia Beligi. She graduated in 2019 from Emory. She studied business, um, and she is now starting her own startup in, related to, oh man, venture capital and access to capital. Really exciting stuff. And then third, we have Ariane Payne, who graduated in 2020 from Elon, studying communications and English. She's now pursuing her MFA, which is wonderful and exciting work for her. I always like to share with you all what we are focusing on in the Schuler program at Mainese for this year. I know that the district at large and Mainese High School specifically um, is really committed to equity, and that is something that we are focusing on in Schuler as well, ensuring that we are working towards equitable recruitment and retention, particularly of black students in our program. And so some of the ways that we are working towards that goal include a focus on culturally sustaining pedagogy, asset-based pedagogy, and also ensuring that from the earliest recruitment process through all of our academic support and college counseling, that we are centering student and family voices, stories, values, and experiences. And lastly, I'd just like to highlight some of the partnership successes and opportunities with Maine East and the District. Um, we have really appreciated a little bit of additional space that Maine East has provided us this year. As you saw at the beginning of what, what I shared, we are growing and we're serving more students. So having a little bit of additional space, space to serve those students has been really essential and wonderful, and we're grateful for that. We also continue to just appreciate and thrive on the collaboration that we have between Schuler staff and the counselors at Mainese, department chairs, teachers, and also um, increasingly coaches, club sponsors, 
all of that has, has really been helpful in ensuring that we can be um, as successful as possible in supporting the scholars. And then lastly, you know, we certainly look forward to continued partnership with the district and my niece on all efforts and any efforts to um, improve equity for experiences for Black and Latinx students. So that's a quick overview. Um, I would love to answer any questions that folks might have. I have a question. Um, thank you, first of all, for a wonderful update. Of course. And um, I just noticed that, you know, in your list of challenges, yeah. I noticed that Anders, um sophomore, your chemistry was a challenge. Yeah. And um, one of the things I made me think is that, you know, the American Chemical Society has a program, Project Seed, mm. and it's for, it's much like the Schubel program. Sure. But um, they may be able to um, help with preparing, you know, eighth graders mm -hmm. to come in, to, you know, like for for the specifically school, with yeah. chemistry. Because I'm guessing you don't do any particular prep of them, like you could in math. I mean, is it the math part that they have a problem with? You know, it's partially some of the math components, for sure. I also think, um, you know, it's accelerated chemistry, so it is just uh, high expectations for independent learning and homework completion, uh, really expecting students not to miss a beat with that. Um, it's just rigorous content, and I think pretty new content for students, to yeah. your point. Yeah. But I, I'm, I'm thinking I, I'd be happy to look into that for yeah. you if you're interested. Yeah, I'd love but to they, more. But they, yeah. are, they you know, are big proponents of, yeah. of pushing chemistry out into all levels of, of education. You absolutely. Know, with the yeah. hope of people studying it. Yeah, absolutely. So, Thank you for that. Sure. Other questions or comments? I have a question, or actually two. So, so um, I remember from the last presentation, very excited about the increased funding, especially for DACA and undocumented students. They think that's amazing. And so I'm just wor uh, I'm just wondering, like, about the partnerships with the universities and um, that you have. Do you do you also look into make sure that they have like resources and supports for that particular population? Because I think especially like professionalism wise we're, we're thinking about even barriers to like professional licensure and being mm -hmm. in you know like those career counseling and all of that so absolutely. you ensure that that continues to happen for them because of those barriers yeah absolutely you know we we do have relationships with these partner colleges um, and so we, we work as hard as we can to leverage those relationships to make sure that we are elevating um, the needs of our students and their families right so that's absolutely a topic of conversation that we have with our partner colleges. Um, we also encourage students in their own research process um, to center those resources in their own research process to understand um, not only am I a good fit for the school, but is the school a good fit for me and is it going to do right by me when I get there? Yeah, great. And I guess my second question too is, you know, especially with you highlighting the need for the retention of black students, yeah. but also thinking overall retention of black and brown students, mm -hmm. what do you ever like tag back to the alumni to kind of highlight you know, what those challenges are? And I'm just curious, what have you learned from yeah. alumni in this program in terms of challenges for black students specifically, for yeah. Latinx students specifically? Sure, absolutely. Yeah, so um, really last year, we spent the better part of last year digging into research, both nas national research around um, success for Latinx and black students, and also alumni interviews, family interviews, current scholar interviews, talking with teachers with the middle school teachers and counselors to try to get as holistic of an understanding as possible about what are the elements that are promoting black and brown student success or obstacles that are getting in the way. And I think it's really hard to boil it down to one thing. We've got a lot of, you know, groups of folks are obviously not monoliths, so there, there were many different things that came up for different folks. Things including, you know, academic challenge, certainly being one, um, sense of belongingness and rigorous courses, being one, um, I think also when it comes to seeing yourself at a predominantly white institution, that is challenging and, and not really a match for a lot of folks who maybe don't feel comfortable imagining themselves at a predominantly white institution for college. And it happens that many, many selective colleges are PWIs. So I think those are just a few of the things that came up most, most frequently. But I think what really struck me was just how um, individual everyone's story was and that really brought me back to the importance of making sure that we are customizing our support and we are centering the student and the family's needs and values and voice from the beginning to the end. That's great. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Yeah,
things working well because you have 95% graduation Absolutely. in four years. Yeah. Now, is that, um, is that for over a couple, what period of time has it been? Since we've been here. So we partnered with, um, with Maine East in 2010. So our first graduating class went to college in 2014. First graduating from college class was 2018. So this class of 2018, 19, 20, 21. So yeah, four classes of students at a 95% graduation. And we have a generally high college graduation rate. Our kids that go to college are well, well above the national average. It's, it's worth a day. I mean, yeah. it's, a high, it's, a, it's a high graduation rate. Thank you again for your excellent so, Oh, Linda, thank you so much. So you said, because um, there was a nice jump between last year and this year in the enrollment. Mm -hmm. and, it was, it, and, and I know you said it was a nice income and freshman class, mm -hmm. but you said it was also sophomores. Yeah. So new students were able to join Correct. Sophomore, sophomore year. Um, and is that only for freshmen and sophomore, or do you also kind of try and see how the students it really is. Um, we, we only select eighth graders and ninth graders, so incoming freshmen or sophomores. After that point, um, students have really missed a lot of the formative and foundational pieces of the program, and it's really difficult to, to bring a student on at, after halfway. Um, but absolutely, we, we primarily accept students in eighth grade year, so they start with us the summer before freshman year. But I always do um, a sweep, a look yeah. at current freshmen to make sure we didn't miss anyone who might be a strong candidate. And for a variety of reasons, there were a larger group this year who came up through that process, larger than usual. Yeah, that's great, though. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Excellent work. Thank, 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 thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So um, this is School Board Appreciation Day. And all of the things that we do in this district, that really, I, I say this a lot, and the board's heard me say this a lot, but I tell everyone, especially people that you know, think they want to do this work, how important a school board is. We don't get in this district to be in the League of Innovative Schools. I'm convinced of that. We don't get to partner with the in 2007. We don't get to launch a coaching program. We don't, we don't get to do these things. We don't get to reinvent a school schedule that maybe had a little controversy to it uh, that not, not everybody was in agreement with. We don't get to do the hard things that are required to be innovative to serve our students better without the people that sit this table. And um, I am in a position to get to study school districts across the country. And I meet with colleagues, I know the, the, the work and, and their existence as superintendents, and I, it always brings me back to reminding me just how blessed we are in this district to have right now the quality of the board that we have sitting here, and to have had the quality of the individuals that have served on this board, at least in the 17 years that I've been here. Because it, it is not unusual when you try to do those hard things, when you try to pluck conventional wisdom, when you try to go to a place that maybe no one's ever gone before, and you've been able to do that here. Um, it's easy for boards to get inundated and peppered with all the reasons why we shouldn't do that. But this board has always been a board that has said, you know what, we kind of like that innovative stuff, and we like thinking about how to continue to serve our students better. And it may be a hard thing, but it's the right thing. And so, just want to take a moment tonight to once again, you know, thank our board publicly.